a very good day to you and welcome to the Revival Train. I have got such an exciting message for you today. But it's also a very serious message and I just hope nobody is going to get offended because we are going to come straight to the point every time. We are now fully fledged in a war zone. Now, if you can't see that, then you must be as blind as a bat. I'm going to pray right at the outset because I think we need prayer before we hear this message. Please bow your heads with me and, and pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd watch over the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's just so wonderful to be with you. And we're getting such good reports of the revival train. People joining the train. Yes, it's a figurative term. It's a virtual train. Okay? But this train is destined for heaven. And in order to get to heaven, we are, we're going through a war. Now, if you can't see that, I hope you will by the end of this program. I want to share my heart with you today. Because the Lord has really spoken to me in my quiet time room. And that is what I want to share with you. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. If we go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. And this is what the Lord says. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand. Remember the battle is the Lord's. But you have to stand. Stand against the wiles, okay, the attacks, the wiles of the devil. Just stop there. That's it. Are you putting on your armor? That's what I want to ask you. You say to me, what is the armor? I'm going to explain it to you. Every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do, I turn over in bed and I tell my wife, Jill, I love her. That's the first thing. Then we pray before I get out of bed. We pray for our families. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for the lost. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the weather. We farmers. We pray for everything. But what we do is we put on the armor of God. And if you're not doing that, and I'm speaking especially to dad and mom, please do it. I've got little grandchildren, 10 years old, 12 years old. They know about putting on the armor of God every single day. You say, is that a habit? Yes, and it's a good one. You put on the helmet of salvation. It's to watch over the mind. Okay, the breastplate of righteousness. So that evil can't come into your heart. Jesus says you must guard your heart. It's the wellspring of life. There are so many depressed people that I'm speaking to. So many people are afraid. They're afraid of dying. They're afraid of disease. They're afraid of the COVID-19. And it is destroying their quality of life. They are not happy anymore. They are not looking forward to heaven. They don't realize that if you walk outside, it is spring in South Africa. The trees are producing new leaves. The birds are building nests for their babies. It's a new season. They don't see it. They are so caught up by the spirit of fear which comes from the devil himself. And that's why we put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our heart. Okay? And then we put on the belt of truth around our waist. There is so much untruth being spoken. Blatant lies. Some of, some of them even from the pulpit. That's right. Okay? There are lies from the government from uh, the, 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 all kinds of sources being fueled by the devil's demons, the devil's army. We are in a war zone. This is a war situation that you and I are facing. What soldier will walk into war with no armor on? I'll tell you, the only soldier that will do that, and it has happened, is a soldier who is wanting to commit suicide. That's what happens. Not you and I. Suicide is not an option. The belt of truth, and then we put on the shoes of peace. That's right. Wherever we go, we should exude the peace of Jesus Christ. 
I'm full of the joy of the Lord this morning. And that's why there is peace in my heart. Peace. Jesus says in John 14, 27, My peace give I unto you, not as this world giveth, give I unto you. Therefore, let not your heart be troubled, and neither be afraid. It's the peace of Jesus that we need. We put on those shoes, okay? And then we take the shield of faith. Okay, what is that there for? The shield of faith is to war off the, the, the arrows of the evil one. That's right, faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This book, my agricultural manual, right, is what's keeping me alive. See, the devil says it's all over. Jesus says not yet. <laughs> okay, people say there's no hope. We say, but God. So we counter the devil with the word of God, which is the shield of faith, to war off the fiery darts of the evil one. And then what about the sword? It's the only weapon that the Christian has. It's the sword of the Spirit, the Bible. Have you ever seen me without my Bible? I really mean that. Have you ever seen me without my Bible? I want to tell you a little joke. But it's not such a joke. In the early days when I was first saved, and we were starting farming here, Jill and I and the kids, they were all young, I had to go and see my bank manager. <laughs> For an extra loan. All the farmers are smiling. My overdraft was full. My production loan was full. And the crop hadn't come off. And I needed more money to pay wages. And I didn't know what to do. So I got in my pickup. And I took my Bible. And I put it in my pickup. Because it goes with me everywhere. It's my sword. It's what defends me. Against the demons of hell. The word of God. When the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted in the desert. What did he say to the devil? He's God. He could have said to the devil, push off. He didn't. He said, it is written. It is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. And the Bible says, and the devil left him for a season. So I took my Bible and I drove up to the bank. I was very nervous because if the bank manager had refused me, I think I would have had to close the doors. And as I got out my pickup, <laughs> I locked my pickup, and the Holy Spirit, oh man, I love him so much. He's here now. Can you feel him in your home? That's right. Because where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. I've got my producer here, I've got a cameraman, and I've got my, one of my spiritual sons, who's my armor bearer. He's in this room right now. Yes, you can't see them, but they're here. And the Holy Spirit is here. And as I had locked my, my pickup, I was going to walk into the bank, the Holy Spirit said to me, you've forgotten something. <laughs> and I'm saying, what, Lord? He says, your Bible. No, but Lord, I, 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 I can't. He says, why not? I opened the pickup, took my, my Bible out, and you can see I've got a rather large Bible. The other day, a man said to me, that thing looks like a, a telephone directory. I said, you got it right. It is. Do you want Jesus' number? And then I, I walked into the bank. And they looked at me, and the receptionist said, can you wait for a minute? And she looked at my Bible. She said, you know, this is a bank. I said, yeah, I know it is. It's not a church, but my Bible's coming in. And then I went, and I sat in front of the bank manager. I said, good morning, sir. You always got to be humble, eh? And then I took my Bible, and I put it on the table. And he looked at the Bible, and he looked at me, and he said, what can I do for you? I said, I need an extension on my loan. He said, how much do you want? It's called, uh, it's called spiritual intimidation. Now, that's just a light story. But I want to say to you now, why are you ashamed to carry this book around with you? Because this book is part of your identification. Jill said to me the other day, I don't want you wearing that hat when you go out with me. I said, why? Because then people will know you. I said, Jill, it's part of my identification. But I want to say to you today, we must realize very seriously, that you and I are in a war zone. And if you're a good soldier of the cross, you need to be prepared for war. So before you go out in the morning, put on your armor, all of it, every day. Yeah, but I don't have time. You don't have time not to. Because if you go out unprepared, I'm telling you now, the devil and all his demons in hell will give you a torrid time. 
Now, one of my favorite scriptures is John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me, and I abide in my word abides in you, my word abides in you, whatever you ask, I'll give you. I love that scripture. The devil and all his demons are afraid of the soldiers of the cross. Are you a soldier of the cross today? Maybe you're sitting there and you're saying, well, you know, I'm in the neutral zone. You know, I'm not really committed and I'm not really anti. Sir, there's no such place in a war zone. There's no neutral. You're either with the enemy or you're with us. Simple. The Lord says clearly in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, He who is not for me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. If you say you're in a neutral position, you're not neutral, you're actually with the enemy. That's right. You're either with the Lord or you're not. So we need to understand something. I want to say something to younger people. Be careful about the company that you keep. Don't keep bad company. Okay? Spending time with the enemy. You can't fraternize with the enemy. Yeah, but you know, Uncle Angus, I'm trying to win them for Jesus. You won't win them for Jesus when you go into the enemy camp. You must pick your time as a good soldier. I'll tell you a little story. And I heard this from John Wimber, who's gone to be with the Lord a long time ago. He came to South Africa with a part of his team, and one of the men got up, and he told this story. I've never forgotten it. It's talk, are we talking about deliverance, okay? We're talking about driving demons out of people. And by the way, it's a reality. Believe me, there's no joke in that. He said that he was phoned up by an executive of a large company. And he, this man said, I've got a huge problem. Please, I need you to come and help me. I will never pray for a person for deliverance if they tell me that they don't have a demon. People will tell you, there's something inside me that overwhelms me. I end up swearing when I shouldn't swear. I think things that I shouldn't think. And it's like this, it's fighting all the time. James Hudson Taylor led a Chinese man to Christ. And after three or four months, he came back. He said, how's it going? He said, it's wonderful. He said, but I'm, I'm, I'm in a battle. And James Hudson Taylor said to him, remember, he took the gospel to China. He started the China Inland Mission. He said, well, what is it like? He says, it's like there's two dogs inside of me. See? And the one dog is evil and the other dog is good. So James Hudson Taylor said to him, which dog is winning? He says, it depends which one I'm feeding the most. There's a word there for a man. I'm talking to you, sir. The Lord says to you today, if you don't put that pornography away, it's going to consume you, it's going to destroy your marriage, and it will bankrupt you. It's a word there. Straight after this program, because I'm going to pray for you at the end of this program. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot fraternize with the enemy. You cannot play the fool and say, no, no, I've got this covered. You haven't got it covered. It's either Jesus or nothing. We are God's soldiers. We've been called to do a job. And we need to do it, and we need to do it well. We are in a war zone. Don't fraternize with the enemy. Don't go to places where you know that the Lord would never go. I always ask myself that question. If I go into a place, Lord, would you come, come into this place? And the Lord says, no, I wouldn't go in there. I'm not going there. I don't care who's invited me. Now, I'm coming back to my story. You thought I forgot, didn't you? <laughs> but I didn't. So this executive asked this man of God to come to his house because he thinks he is possessed and he wants deliverance. He went there. It was a dark night. He said there was no moon. There was no stars. It was black, dark. It was about 10 o'clock at night. He drove into the driveway. It was one of these huge buildings. Looked like the White House. Had those white columns, big doors. And as he walked up the steps, the door was slightly open. Just slightly open. And he opened the door. Is anybody here? Nobody said anything. He walked in and he saw a light, a single light on in the study. Palatial study. And he walked down this passage. And as he walked into the study... He was looking around. He heard a growling in the corner of the room. Like a, like a wild animal. A growling sound. Like a monster. 
And he looked around the table, and there was this man. This is the dignified man with the three-piece suit, crouching like a wild beast in the corner, growling at him. You know what he did? He turned around, and he walked straight out. And he got in his car, and he went home. Don't fraternize in the devil's territory. Don't play the fool with the devil in his home ground. The next morning when the sun was shining, he got two or three of his mature soldiers of the gospel. They got into the car and they drove over to that same house. And they went up the steps and they knocked on the door. And the maid opened the door and they said, we want to see the boss. And she said, please come in. And he was seated at his table, that's right, in the same study, with his three-piece suit on, his spectacles on, and he looked so fine. Good morning, gentlemen, with a big smile. They closed the door behind them, and they came straight up to him, and they cast out the demon. And I think it was more than one before that man could do anything. He broke down, he wept, he was free. There's a timing taking place. I'm talking about war zone. So just be very careful about what you're doing. I want to say to some mothers, look at carefully at what books your children are reading. No, but he's just a friendly ghost. There's no friendly demons. Yeah, but it's just a, it's just a little story. I'm telling you, folks, I know. I used to read the, 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 the Pilgrim's Progress to my children. Oh, but that's old-fashioned. No, it's not. It was written by John Bunyan hundreds of years ago. It's still one of the most popular books in the world. Read that book to your children about Christian on his route to the celestial city, which is heaven. Your children sometimes are more afraid, mom, than what you are because they hear what you're saying. You're talking about the COVID-19. You're talking about, um, about uh, uh, just, ap just no respect for, for, for society or for authority. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know. They're listening to you, mother. Don't talk about that rubbish. Talk about the soon coming king, Jesus. Tell them that if Jesus is in your heart, there's no one can harm you. Tell them that Jesus is your healer. Nothing else. Nothing else. Jesus alone is your healer, if you can believe him. We are in a war. Keep away from bad company. You know, um, you might even be watching this program. There used to be an intercessor that used to travel with me when I started preaching many years ago. His name is Bradley Stewart. He lives in America now. He's a very, very special man of God. And he once said to me, Angus, he said, before you speak to people about Jesus, speak to Jesus about people. Isn't that beautiful? So if you want to go and witness to someone, make sure you pray for them before you go there. And you'll find the doors open. They'll probably be waiting for you. And probably before you can even say a word, they'll just burst out in tears and say, please help me, I need God. And that's what you do. You must get prepared. Okay? You must get prepared. Now, as you notice by my table, I have got a bee suit. <laughs> I have become a beekeeper. That's right. And I do it because it is therapeutic for me. And I love bees. I really love bees. Now, in Africa, we have the African bee. And he's also known as the killer bee. That's right. You know, you've got the European bees in Europe. You've got the American bees in America. And you can go to YouTube and all these programs. And you will see that these men will take honey out of hives with no mask, in a pair of shorts, and a pair of, of um, running shoes, without any problem. No gloves, nothing. But you won't do that in Africa. But I want to also say one thing about the African bee, because I'm an African. The African bee is the hardest working bee in the world. That's right. He makes more honey than all the other bees. And maybe that's why he's so protective over his hive. But you see, with a bee, you must respect him. If you don't respect the bee, he will hurt you. He will sting you. Yes. He will kill you, actually, if you allow him to. Now, when you're dealing with the devil, okay, you must understand who you're dealing with. I'm not giving him any glory. You never hear me talking about the devil or demons on this program. I don't really have time 
But today the Lord has laid on my heart that we are in a war zone and he's laid on my heart. Uh, he wants me to speak to his soldiers. That's right. I can see a 12-year-old soldier sitting there, son. And I'm telling you, you might see the coming of the king. You cannot treat the devil and his demons with no respect. In other words, you have to be ready. You have to be qualified. Now, I'm going to explain to you how I do go about taking out honey. And there might be some bee experts here. Please forgive me if I haven't uh, dotted the I's and crossed the T's. I'm just telling you what I've learned. And what I've read, I've got a few books here, okay, about beekeeping. So this is what I use, okay? These are my books here, right? These are some of my books. But this is the book that I want to talk about today. And the Lord says you must respect those creatures that he has created. Honey is medicine to the body. Now you're talking about medicine. That's right. They make balm for cracked lips, cracked uh, um, um, soles of your feet. If you've got a wound, it's medicine. They even make shampoo for your hair. That's right. They found honey in the pyramids 3,000 years ago. Why? Because in this book, that's where it all came from. So you treat the bee with respect. When you are dealing in a war zone like we are in the world at the moment, you must treat this whole attack. Don't just say, ah, oh, that's nothing. It's not nothing. It's killing people. Oh, yes. And the bee will kill you as well if you don't respect him. So we need to respect the bee. Okay? So I'm going to just explain to you what I do. See, this here is what we call a smoker. This is a smoker. Yeah, what does it do? Well, we open this up, and in here we put grass or some kind of material. We light it up, okay? And this is a little compressor here. And this just pumps it. You pump it. Can you see the smoke coming out? Right. There's no fire in there, so this must be holy smoke. Holy ghost smoke. There it comes. See? Okay, so what we do, we go to the, the, the hive, and we smoke it. So what does it do? It tells the bee there's a fire. Or it tells the bee that there's an emergency. So the bee starts to consume honey. You say to me, is this a Christian message? Yes, it is, sir. So listen up. And then what happens? He becomes dosa. And he can't sting you or go ballistic. Because as a young beekeeper, I made big mistakes. I used to smoke the bees and not give them a chance to become drowsy and open up the hive and they would attack me. Oh, yes. And it's quite scary, actually, when the whole, the whole swarm goes for you. Okay? So what we do, I'm just thinking now, I'm using an example, the Holy Spirit. See, before you go out, you make sure the Holy Spirit goes before you. And he will douse any demon activity anywhere near you. You see, you see, when the Holy Spirit is in you, the devil and all his demons can recognize it. And they just pull back. People say to me, don't, don't, watch out. Remember when I went to Kings Park Rugby Stadium and I, what did I say? I said, to hell with El Nino and all his demons. People wrote to me and said, how can you be so disrespectful? I said, what? I said, the devil's going to hell anyway. And his demons with him. I'm not as afraid of the devil. Because I'm spending time preparing myself for the coming of the Lord. I'm in his army. And we're in a war zone. And I signed up on the 18th of February, 1979. I signed up. And on that, uh, that uh, certificate that says there, there's no guarantee that you won't die. Tell me one army in the world that will sign up somebody. And he says, but... Uh, can you guarantee that I won't get hurt? It's a war we're in. Of course we're going to get hurt. I'm full of wounds all over, especially in my back, just behind the, the, the shoulder blades, because I've been stabbed many times. I've got scars all over my back. Who stabs me? Only people that can get close enough to stab me, and that's not a joke. That's quite sad, isn't it? Who stabbed Jesus in the back? Judas Iscariot. Who denied Jesus three times when he should have stood up Peter, his right-hand man. And who said, I'll believe it when I see it? It's Thomas. Three of the 12 disciples and all the rest ran away. So we prepare ourselves with the Holy Spirit. And that just quietens down the demon activity. When you walk in, they walk out. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So what are you scared of? 
Hey, what are these? These are gloves. These are rubber gloves, and they go right up my arm to here. That's right. I don't operate or take any of the honey out with my bare hands because then I'm asking for big trouble. I'll get stung many, many times. We put on the gloves, okay? And then what is the next thing we put on when we are going to um, take honey out of a hive? Well, I just want to say to you right now that we put on this jacket here. There it is. I'm going to take it off the hook. There it is, okay? And that's how we put it. Then we put our gloves on. So we are completely insulated. And then we put on the trousers. I put on a double set of trousers. And then I use gumboots. There they are in the corner. Rubber gumboots. And I put a rubber band around to stop the bees from climbing inside. You say, come on, Angus, do they do that? Of course they do. I tried to do it once with my cowboy boots on. <laughs> they stung me on my toes. Well, that's how you learn, eh? You learn the hard way. But what I'm trying to say is you've got to put on the armor of God. You cannot le leave any openings that they can penetrate, okay? So what am I talking about? I'm talking about what you read. I'm talking about what you watch on TV. You know, it's so sad. Many a time, Jill and I will look at a movie and we think, this is a nice movie, and it'll start off nice and they start blaspheming and using the name of the Lord. Then there's some filthy accusations. And then there's some graphic uh, uh, sexual scenes. We just turn it off. And it's sad. And yet some of us allow our kids to watch that stuff. Okay? And then these horror movies. You know, folks, I'm not old-fashioned. I really am not. I've been right around the world. I was a wild man before I was born again. I know about life. But I see some of these so-called cartoons that you allow your children to watch. They make me scared. <laughs> and then you wonder why your little boy wets his bed at night. You wonder why your little girl can't go to sleep with a, with a light off. But you let him sit there and watch about the friendly demon and the friendly monster. And we don't need that stuff. I'm serious now. And I know that a lot of you are getting upset with me. I'm telling you the truth. We're in a war zone. How can you give your son a machine gun and let him go and play with it? He's going to kill himself and lots of other people too. Do not give the devil a foothold in your life. Right. Don't be lazy. You know what lazy is? I'll tell you what lazy is. Lazy is, look, you know, I don't feel like putting on those trousers. I'll just go with my jeans. They'll sting you right through those jeans. And you deserve it because you are lazy. It takes me more time to put on my outfit than to re retract the honey. It really does. It's taught me patience. And when I'm finished, I've got to check. Have I put everything on? I've got my gloves on. Is everything okay? Check my... Is there no, there's no holes in the visor here. Okay, have I zipped it up properly? Because if I haven't, they're going to get in there. And you know what they do? When they get in, they call their friends. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. The beekeepers will tell you. And they all come into that little hole. When you open up just a chink, okay, I'm just going to have just one joint of marijuana. Only one, because all my friends are, and then I'll be fine. That might be the beginning of the end. I'll never forget sitting at the, at the station in Peter Marisburg, waiting to catch a train in the old days. There was a big sign up there on the top of the station put up there by Alcoholics Anonymous. Every alcoholic started off as a social drinker. Don't even open a little chink if you want to be one of God's commandos, one of the frontline boys, one of the men that's going to usher in the King of Kings, that's going to drive out the demons and see people saved. You cannot be lazy. Don't compromise. That's what troubles me a lot. Oh, brother, I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. I can have that affair, and God has forgiven me. Lies! Oh, brother, I don't have to go to church anymore because Jesus lives inside of me. I'm just going to go to a party. Lies! Don't compromise. Don't ever turn your back on the enemy. Now, I'm talking to some boxers there. Boxers. They'll tell you, you never take your eyes off your opponent. Is that right, young man? That's it. 
As soon as you look to the crowd or to the manager or behind, the knockout blow. You're down and out. Don't turn your back on the devil. By the way, the arm of God, you notice it's all in the front. Did you notice that? Nothing on the back. Why? Because as a soldier of the cross, you are not supposed to turn your back on the devil. Don't let your God down. And then I'm finishing up now because I want to pray for you. Personal character is so important. Don't let it slip. Because when you do, the devil laughs at you. Personal character. Don't throw it away. Yeah, you know, I got drunk last night and I, you know, I did some stupid things and I'm a bit embarrassed. The devil's laughing. He says, yeah. He says, I got you now. You're going to have to work hard to get rid of that. And I said that thing that I shouldn't have said. And I told that filthy joke that was just on the borderline. Well, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Character. The devil laughs at you. Don't do it. Don't compromise. Don't allow your personal character. You should be upstanding, upright. People should come up to you and ask you, I want what you've got. I see the way in which you treat your wife. You know that I was in town the other day? That's Peter Marisburg, 60 kilometers away. I was doing nothing. I was sitting in the pickup, sorry, in our car. Jill was shopping, and I was preparing, and because I don't like shopping. <laughs> I don't think there'll be any shopping in heaven. Anyway, I know the ladies didn't like that comment. And the men said, yes, we agree. But seriously, I was sitting in there, reading, and Jill came out with a trolley. I saw her coming out, and I jumped out the car. And we've been married on just on 50 years now. I said 50 years. And I came around the car, and I opened the door for her to let her in. And I put all the groceries on the back seat. Closed the door. And a young man, a teacher from one of the private schools in Peter Marisburg, he came over to me, he said to me, Mr. Bucket. I said, yes, how are you? He says, I want you to come and speak to our students, please. I said, yeah, no, no problem, we, we, whenever we can make it. I said, why? He said, I saw what you just did. I said, well, what did I do? You know? He said, the way in which you treated your wife. He said, I want you to tell our young men, it's a boys' school, how to treat their wives when they get married. So... Don't let your personality, your character, be tarnished because the devil will laugh at you. And then just to finish up, don't be inconsistent. It troubles a lot of people. One day you're serving the Lord, the next day you're in the pub, you're acting like a, like a wild animal. And then you're back, in the, back at the altar and you're weeping, then you're back again. Then you're having an affair, then you're not having an affair. You're making a fool of our faith, and the devil just loves it, and Jesus is crying, okay? We water down our effectiveness when we are inconsistent. We must be like the rock of Gibraltar. We must not move. When we are inconsistent, it makes us weak. But to finish up, because I want to pray for you, when you are correctly kitted out, correctly, it gives you a security. When I get out my pickup to go to the hive, okay, at the right time, remember? Not in the middle of the day when the wind's blowing. Then they are very active, just like that demon at that night. Remember the story I told you? You pick a nice overcast day, quiet day, early in the morning, late in the afternoon, when they're all settled, and that's when you go and take your honey out and you inspect your hives. But what gives me confidence is when I'm kitted out. I know I've got my helmet on. It's all zipped up. I've got my breastplate, my belt around my waist. I've got my, my, my shoes of peace. I've got my, I've got my shield of faith. I've got my sword of the Spirit. I'm ready for action. I've got the Holy Spirit in me. Then I'm scared of nothing. And you know something? It's an amazing thing. Remember, I'm a farmer. That wild animal, it can be a cow. When you're on your horse, it can be anything. When they know that you are settled, even the bees, don't tell me how it works. They just don't give me trouble. But when you're half kitted out and you're half dressed and you're unprepared and you're in a rush and you've forgotten half your stuff, you will be stung. Now I'm going to pray for you. But starting from tomorrow, you will start to put on the armor of God every morning. You'll prepare your heart. You'll have a proper quiet time. 
And when you go out, you'll know who you represent. You will know how to use your firearms. Okay, that's it. And when the lies and the darts of the devil that's full up, especially in the media, comes against you, you can just brush it off. It does not affect you. It's been so good to be with you. And I trust that this program will touch you. And I trust that you'll share it with your friends. Because there are too many soldiers that are getting wounded out there. A lot of them are actually getting killed. And it's just because they don't know who they're fighting. And they are not prepared. Let's bow our heads. And I would like you to pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, just pray it out loud. Pray it out loud with your family. Dear Lord Jesus, today, I thank you for showing me again for reminding me again that I am in a war zone. This is not a time, it's not a Sunday school picnic. It is a matter of life and death. And it doesn't just affect me. Pray this. It doesn't just affect me. It affects all those around me. I ask you to forgive me for not taking this war seriously. I ask you to forgive me for being slap, slack, for being lazy and not putting on the armor every day. I ask you to forgive me. Today, Lord, strengthen me. Make me a soldier of the cross. Lord, I want to see souls saved. I want to see demons driven out. I want to see the sick raised up. I want to see people coming into the kingdom. Lord, I want to see people knocking on the window of my motor car and saying, what have you got? I want it. Lord, strengthen us today in Jesus' name. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zechariah 4, 6. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God bless you until we meet again on the revival train. And I know that when we meet again, you'll be fully armed and ready for soul winning. God bless you and goodbye.